Hi everybody, and we're back from Play Expo 2015, and well, what a fantastic weekend it was. Uh, there's tons of YouTube channels out there that have got very specific videos about loads of things to do with the event. I'm going to give you a little shot of the arcade section. Um, I'm going to also take a moment right at the beginning now to thank a few people. Um, it doesn't come together on my own. I'm not the only person that's involved in this and I'd just like to say a thank you to a few people. Um, to Mark, Carl, Gaz, Sean, Dan, Stuart, Jay and Phil uh, for being on the loading and unloading and event staffing, general event staffing team. Um, without you guys I really couldn't have made it happen. It wouldn't have been the success that it was. This has been our smoothest year to run this thing yet in uh, in association with uh, with replay and I'm really glad that we've got a great team and it's all come together and you know thanks very much that's all I can say to you guys just thank you and I hope you'll work with us again next year uh, for everybody else out there <clears throat> I'd also like to thank uh, Luke also known as Arcade UK on YouTube uh, he's one of my close friends and also an, an amazing video game repair and pinball mechanic as well and he spent a fair bit of time on one of the setup days doing some repairs, well going around and checking some of the machines uh, and solving some of the more interesting problems and I'm going to show you a clip from a video that he's put up on YouTube of uh, a couple of fixes that he's done on uh, Tempest, uh, one of the other machines. When we come back after that um, we're going to go to the video of me walking around. Now I decided to take the film, I'm going to show it you exactly as it is. I decided to take the film on Sunday rather than on any other day. All the machines had then been running for effectively three days because uh, we powered them all up sequentially on the Friday and ran them all pretty much until 8 o'clock at night on Friday. And with them being like that, they've done a three day run and I just wanted to show you what it's like at the back end of the event. Anybody who's been there will know exactly how busy it is, so anybody who's looking to pick fault and say, oh, it doesn't look very busy, and all the rest of it, no, this is about half past four, five o'clock, or even possibly later on Sunday. And the reason it's so late was because we waited right, well, we waited for the grace and, um, well, I can't describe it in a way, but the honour of meeting uh, Warren Davies, the creator of Cubert, who was kind enough to spend a few minutes talking to Sean from Tenpence Arcade and also um, just <laughs> just a little photo op. Uh, I don't get to do much else other than look after the machines during the event. Um, I have to have a team around me to, to feed me and um, things like that. <laughs> Not literally intravenously or anything but I have to have a team around uh, to get this sort of thing done and so I don't really ever leave the, the stall. Um, people say oh did you see such and such and I say what there's an event going on around there? Um, no, I'd just like to um, say it was a great honour to meet Warren and a, a big highlight for me was a photo op and a handshake and, and he signed the cabinet for me. Um, also just going to say a big thank you as well to Carol, my partner, girlfriend, um, cohort, uh, Mrs RGP as somebody else knows, as everybody else knows her and you know she wanders around, she makes sure everybody's been fed and watered and she bullies me into making sure I don't get distracted and so thanks honey um, that's about it so let's let's show you the tech video stuff uh, I'm also going to show you a little AR2 repair, an AR1 test repair uh, scene as well here we are at Play Expo in Manchester just taking a look at a Atari Tempest cab that's not powering up so we see we've got power to the cab, the board's got power. Um, I don't see the spot killer light on the monitor, but no picture yet. So I'm going to investigate further and see what's going on with that. Right, so about an hour later, having a bit of a problem with the high voltage assembly. So I'm going to check it out now. And not the sharpest picture in the world, but hopefully it should last and be playable for the rest of the show. Right, here's the next game on my fixing list. It's Blasteroids by Atari. This one's got no sound. I've already had a poke around in there and I've identified a bad connection. So I'm just going to crimp a new, con re uh, new connector on. I've uh, got these crimps here. Get that replaced and we'll test this out. Right, so I'm still working on the Blasteroids. Let me explain what happened. So, the uh, speaker terminal came off. 
which caused the wire to uh, short out basically, so shorted out the amplifiers. Uh, I've replaced the connector, but we've got two fuses blown. So these here, just tested those. I'm going to see if we've got replacements and fit them. Hopefully it hasn't actually blown the amplifiers and it's actually just blown the fuses uh, with any luck. There we go, sounds now working. That's another one fixed, let's move on to some else. Right, Champion Sprint. This one's had various problems. We fixed most of which by reseating chips. There is a persistent problem, ROM at 6K. That is showing as bad. So, here's the uh, ginormous board set. 6K is down here. Uh, ready reseated it. Also reflowed the socket as it looked a bit dry, that did not help, so I'm going to take the board away, check the ROM out and probably replace the socket as well, see if that helps the situation. Okay, hope you enjoyed that a little bit. Uh, still to come, yeah, we have the actual walkthrough of the main arcade bit. Uh, that's my video, it's coming up in a few moments. I'm going to also just show you a quick uh, repair that we had to do before Play Expo this time. I was going to slot this in as its own video but decided it was probably, well, it's too short and we just didn't do enough of them uh, to make it worthwhile to uh, to do this sort of thing. So I'm going to show you that now. It's an AR1 testing of a couple of AR1 blocks um, that were supposed to go back into the asteroids camp. In fact, one of them did. Uh, we'll show you that and then we'll come back and we'll show you the, uh, the, the walk around footage. So I've been given a couple of Atari AR1 modules to check out and uh, here's the Franken rig uh, with the power going in so uh, we've done some AR2 testing previously here's the uh, back of the uh, back of the ghetto blaster there's the power supply uh, we're taking the uh, 36 volts off that into the power sorry 10.3 actually that's all this one requires uh, straight in uh, to the power input supply we're taking uh, an audio input feed I must remember to turn that off because every video I do ends up with uh, that thing beeping in it uh, so the uh, audio input feed goes into there and that's connected up to my phone uh, speaker is connected over there and I've checked the 5 volt uh, by using the ground and the uh, 5 volt tab there these are a cut down version so the AR2 has extra bits over here for other voltages such as uh, 22 volts or 15 volts etc etc uh, plus 12 minus 12 whatever you need to whatever they were spec to populate with for whatever game so we've got uh, an AR board hooked up I'm going to hit play on here there we go and we've got sound as well now what I did find out very quickly uh, was that if you don't ground pin 7 uh, in this J5 connector or whatever it is here, this one where you have put your get a bit audio input, uh, then the sound is muted. If I take this ground connector off here, oh look, there you go, the sound disappears. It's part of a feature of this design of board. Uh, I don't think they implemented it in the later ones. So that's AR1 of 2 quickly given a quick test. I'm just going to cut the camera for a second and switch the boards out and that's going to be uh, number 2. But that one works and the 5 volt is giving me exactly 5 volts. Right, I have the other one set up, ready to go. Ready for test. Somebody's already done some refurb work on this one by the looks of things. Um, so, what we're going to do now is just give it a quick test. Uh, everything is exactly the same, everything looks fine to me. So, we've got the meter hooked up here. I didn't show you the 5 volt test last time. Uh, I've got the voltage going in on this connector, J6, and I'm going to. I've got uh, green is being used as ground over here and yellow has been used as positive on the 5 volt test tab there. I know the 10.3 is going to work. I'm going to switch it on. Hopefully I'll get 5 and a bit volts. That's fine. 5.92. Uh, exactly what I'd like it to be. I'm going to see if it's adjustable. Uh, I don't think this is... Yeah, it's somewhat adjustable. I'm going to tremble it back down. Yeah, I mean it's going to be minus load there and it hasn't had a sense mod done on it so... Uh, that's kind of what I'm expecting. I'm able to, re to adjust, put a load on the end of it, and I'll uh, I'll be able to uh, get some kind of uh, sensible five volts out. So I'm just going to power off just for a second. Uh, insert the test connectors for the audio side because there's only uh, five volts and audio. So there's my five volts there. I'll use the ground peg over here. Clip on. This is a bit bad one-handed, but never mind. There you go, run that test. I don't need the meter anymore for this, so I'm going to turn that off. Uh, speaker connector. So one of these goes on ground, which is that one. 
and the other one which is coming up from the back of the speaker over there. Uh, speakers do have polarity, contrary to popular belief, but for a low level volume like this, it doesn't matter one I/O to which way around it is. Let's just shove that down into pin seven down there, and make contact with that hopefully. Put that back on ground. A little bit of a rush here to do this because I um, just need to make sure whether it works or it doesn't. I thought it'd be useful because we've not done an AR1 together before. Uh, on the audio side, I saw some music playing, so when I switch this on, hopefully. Yeah, if I just get this mute circuit right. Yeah, we heard it go then. So. Yeah, it's that grain, it's not making proper connection. there for a sec. I'm happy with that. What I will do is I'll just change the output over onto speaker 2. Yep. So both of the two amplifiers, because these are actually a stereo amplifier pair, both amplifier chips down there are working properly. Right. Fantastic. Okay. So that's a very quick AR one video, we, these are both uh, from an asteroids cab normally, uh, you usually find them in there. Riveting stuff, hey? Um, AR1 uh, test repair video and sound checks and things. Let's, um, let's move straight on I think to the, to the main video. So we're going to see now the straight through footage, uh, which also includes me starting up with a bit of an intro as I start from the back back area. Remember this was shot uh, around about 5, 5, five o'clock-ish on the Sunday after the machines had been running for, they'd done three consecutive days. We do switch them off overnight, by the way, uh, for anybody who's interested. Um, so I'll show you that and we'll come back at the end. All right, this is Play Expo 2015. This is Sunday evening, just before close. I've deliberately left taking a video of this until then because I wanted to kind of show you what goes on and what sort of, sort of battle damage we get from some of the machines and things like that and failure rate. So we're just going to take a really quick pan down the building. It's only going to be a really short video, but this is the end of, uh, end of the show. It's been unbelievably busy this year again. Uh, we've had a massive turnout, great response, and thanks to everybody who's helped out and also everybody who's come up and spoken to us. So, uh, T2, Tootsman Day, which came to us, um, uh, was bought by one of the big place guys, uh, and Ben, and we've done a bit of servicing on that and got it up and running. Monitor's got a slight fault on it, which keeps the TC developer of heat. 18 wheeler, uh, NBA Jam is all working, Daytona USA, Lethal Enforcers, I fixed the other day, no problems there, Paper Boys, great. Um, Turbo Out Run, Missile Storm, uh, Dick Dug, Pack and Paint, still got the wobbly monitor on Traverse USA there, Zack Invaders, Crazy Kong, Puckman's nice and working even though it used to have some issues at my house, Pleiad's Rally X, uh, what's that one? That was Arkanoid, 1942, Spice Sean's not glued to it, Mr. Do, uh, Phoenix is there, Munch Baxter, we're doing fine, Battle Zone's now working again, it was having a bit of an issue. Uh, what else have we got? Tempest. Thanks very much to Luke for looking at that one in a, in a hurry on Friday for me. Packland. Uh, Clax we've got in that sack there. And nice to see the, uh, the replay crew taking a few moments to uh, say hello to everybody on YouTube there, hello. Simon. Hey. Nice to see a nice little bit of relaxation going on. It is. Yeah. Uh, oh, we've got a, uh, a bonnet of failure by the looks of things on that Zacharia there. Sort that out afterwards. Tron, Gorf, Galaxian, Power Drift, Afterburner, Super Hang On, Outrun, Thunderblade, Radmobile, Outrunners, Space Invaders Part 2, a Sega Mega Tech, a Chow Stand, a Robotron on that side. That's 40 something. Ah. Let's give you the up what it looks like from this perspective. So, there we go. Ton of Goliaths on this side. Let's go down here. Mm. So, we have at the bottom, we have Dan who's looking exhausted. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks for helping out, Dan. All right. All right. 
Brave Racer, um, Mortal Kombat, Star Wars Trilogy, uh, Blasteroid, Championship Sprint had a bit of a failure, a bit of a graphics issue, so I saw it fall out to sleep. Uh, Operation Wolf 3, Police Trainer, uh, what's that one? Uh, special, special Criminal Investigation, Silent Scouts are working beautifully here all weekend. Uh, just has overheat issues. Kung Fu Master, Salamander, uh, what's that in that guy? Bubble Bobble, Burger Time, Nemesis, Gyrus, Ghosts and Goblins, Karate Champ with a repaired, uh, replaced board after yesterday, um, Nibbler, uh, what have we got in that one? Sidearm, see, I can't remember, it's a sea of games. Playtrace 10, Hyper Sports, I haven't even played it once myself this time. Road Blasters, or one of two Road Blasters cabs that's here. Space Harrier uh, behaving perfectly. Quartet. Toon Carmoon, a robot, another Robotron, Millipede, Time Pilot, Super Punch Out, Speed Buggy, Pole Position 2, Frogger, Juno First, Qbert, now signed. You'll see me in another video interview with Sean on Tempest Arcade for that. Popeye, Donkey Kong, Space Invaders, Berserk, Amidar, Pac Man, Point Blank 2, which as always has been swamped. Right on this side, Spy Hunter. Bomb Jack, even though it says Mad Alien, I must get that sorted for us. Uh, Double Dragon. Smash TV, needs to sort the marquee. Weckler Man 24, power supply replaced. Now working. Uh, Virtua Fighter. T Turtles. Tubin. Uh, with the, still with the same fault. Players Choice Cab. Oh, sorry, sorry the, that's the Capcom Street Fighter Cab. Uh, a gauntlet, my other Gauntlet Legends has an LCD in it. Oh, hide your shame. Shinobi, Return of the Jedi. Uh, player's Choice. Midnight Resistance. Mr. Do, you know, it's loveliness. The other Road Blasters cab, and I'm so happy that I managed to fix the board on that one uh, with the graphics fault that was there. And finally, finish off with four player Gauntlet Legends. That's it now. One thing you didn't see, or well, most point, not many people saw, so I was part of the simp inside of it. I'm just going to run around here, and us and the pinball guys, and this is the massive pinball area, it's like practically the rest of the hall, uh, did a crossover. So we did pin vid and pin vid. So defend a pinball, defend a video, Space Invaders pinball, Space Invaders video, didn't even get to play any of these. Star Wars Pinball, Star Wars Video, Swamped as always, Indiana Jones Pin, Indiana Jones Temple Doom Video Game, and right on the end of here, although the, machi the pinball machine itself has been uh, tipped up, we've got Robocop in a Jammer Cab, and if I just point back there, that's actually the Robocop Pinball Machine. So, there's the NLP tent, and back over here, Tons more pinballs. I just really, I'm so sorry it's been taken till the end of the show. I've only got time to go around the rest of the show and talk to you about all the other games that are here. So, around here, that's basically it. Take a little snapshot photo off the camera at the same time. Wander down here. at home base. We'll see you all again at the next event and also the next repair video. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. That's about it for this one. I'm just going to take one last moment just to say thanks to Andy from Arcade Club as well for the loan of some of his machines. It's a massive combined collection. Both of us work very, very hard to, to bring uh, to bring you what we do. I do the event side of things, Andy does the, the arcade. Um, I'm really looking forward to when he moves very shortly to the new venue. It's going to be bigger, better, longer hours. There's going to be a bar there. There's going to be a whole bunch of other stuff that you've already read about on Facebook. I'm not going to keep going over that. I'll let him give you all the surprises, but obviously I'll be there and I'll be running around and fixing machines and things like that. And that's the fun part for me. So um, if I don't see you all at Arcade Club, soon i will see you all either on youtube or i will see you at the next event until then catch you later